You can or you cannot? Oh, oh. All right, you can hear me. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited. We've got a humongous crowd here. Uh, <laughs> but that's OK. You know, come over. Yeah, come on, come on, come over. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm looking at the time. Uh, I know that we are on a tight schedule, right? And I think I should get started, right? And I, I'm sure that as I get uh, to talk a little bit about what Brocade is doing with OpenStack, people are going to get excited, and we're going to get more people joining us for this quick presentation. All right, so uh, welcome. Welcome to the demo theater, right? And I've got the privilege to kick it off here. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about here for the next uh, 15 minutes or so is you know, uh, what Brocade is doing with OpenStack. So the title of my presentation is OpenStack at Brocade, and you will be learning a little bit more about uh, what Brocade communication system uh, is currently doing with this infrastructure as a service orchestration engine. Right. So my name is Didier Stolp. I am in a product management role at, uh, at Brocade. All right, so without any further ado, what I would like to basically provide you with is a very simple, very uh, high level paintbrush description of what Brocade is doing with this solution, right? And how we've been engaging within the community to deliver solutions that are OpenStack based, which basically in a nutshell allows you to build those open cloud, right? And it's basically here a uh, way for me to reinforce the fact that Brocade is really committed in terms of adhering to standards and also uh, supporting open source efforts. So in a nutshell, you can build those open clouds that are vendor agnostic and technology agnostic. So uh, what uh, I propose we do here is to quickly go over the multiple projects that we have in flight with OpenStack. And as you can see here, I have categorized them into two major bu buckets. There is the the Brocade plugins that you can see you know, right there in this uh, red box, but also those Brocade extensions that uh, we've been working on, right? So let me go quickly over the first category, the first buckets, right? And go over the multiple projects that we currently are working on that basically, in a nutshell, enable the interoperability between the OpenStack framework itself and it's going across multiple of those components. There is Neutron, but there is also Cinder. And that enable those components to interoperate with our Brocade products, right? And you will see that uh, the interoperability that we are creating goes, spans across the entire Brocade product line, encompassing IP devices, but also stand storage networking devices, right? So the first one that I would like to mention here is this uh, driver, the Brocade plugin that we have contributed back in Grizzly for orchestrating layer two services on top of the Brocade virtual cluster switch, right? So hopefully you've heard about the, the Brocade VCS virtual cluster switch that delivers Ethernet fabric services, right? And uh, as the underpinning technology for delivering Ethernet fabric services, we do leverage Trail. And Trail is this great technology that enables layer two multipathing across the Brocade VCS domain. All right, so that's one. As a matter of fact, uh, the Brocade VCS plugin has been contributed back to the Grizzly release. So if you go OpenStack.org, then download Grizzly, then you will automatically get this uh, Brocade plugin. So the next one that I briefly wanted to touch on is the work that we are doing in terms of uh, integrating with our load balancer technologies and product family. Load balancing takes two form factors at Brocade. There is the classical physical chassis, but we just released a virtual ADX, ADX being the name of the product that enables layer four to layer seven services, right? And we are currently working on a Brocade driver that we're gonna be able to contribute back in the ice house release, right? So very exciting stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, load balancing as a service within OpenStack is still a nascent uh, project, right? And uh, the community is still working on it. But 
if you join us at 5 o'clock in the main hall, you will understand how Brocade has been working with Yahoo Japan to make this a reality. And we have a common project between Brocade and Yahoo Japan where we have materialized, if you will, load balancer as a service. Uh, and this module has been fully deployed in a production large scale environment. Again, you know, it's at Yahoo Japan. I uh, wanted to quickly move on to the Viaravi router, right? We're also working on a plugin that basically enables layer three services onto the Viaravi router. Viara is a company that Brocade acquired a few months ago. Uh, the Viaravi router really, really instantiates, if you will, NFV, network function virtualization, right? And uh, supports multiple features and capabilities like layer three services, VPN, firewall, NAT, and many others that if you're interested, uh, you should actually reach out to us and uh, take a look at our booth, uh, the Brocade booth, right? And last but not least, we are having also in planning a Brocade plugin for our MLX solution. The MLX is a core router that is definitely positioned as this uh, 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 core a solution for classical data centers, but it's also leveraged for WAN interconnect or data center uh, peering, okay? So as you can see, lots of work that's going on in terms of basically creating, creating relevance from a uh, broker perspective into this open stack uh, infrastructure as a service, open source solution. So we went uh, over those drivers, those plugins, right? And what I would like to do now is to really draw your attention to the second bucket, the one on the right-hand side of this slide here that talks about the Brocade extensions, okay? So not only Brocade is willing to consume those OpenStack API, those fast-bound APIs, if you will, that are really designed for vendors to hook up their platform, but we are also taking the leap of faith to expand on the OpenStack capability, adding more capabilities and functionalities into the framework itself, right? So one that I would like to mention here is the work that we've been doing in terms of creating the support in OpenStack Cinder that manages block storage for fiber channel support, right? Uh, the way we went about this has been quite unique. What we've done is basically rallying tier one storage vendors such as IBM, EMC, HP, and Itachi, and we've been conducting a weekly meeting with them in such a way that we've been defining as a group, as a subcommittee, if you will, as part of this OpenStack uh, consortium, what fiber channel uh, support in OpenStack me means. So lots of good work has been done already. Uh, most of the fiber channel storage piece has been taken care of in uh, Cinder, in uh, Grizzly, uh, where uh, this support in the framework has been added, but many of those companies have been able to also contribute their own driver, right? And we, Brocade, we are actually taking the lead and championing the support of storage area networking into OpenStack. And what that means is that uh, what we are adding in the ice house release is a fiber channel SAN zone manager, because obviously the most common operation that you can think of in an orchestration context is really zoning where you need to attach your host to your targets, right? So the, the last one that I would like to touch on here really briefly is uh, some very interesting work that Brocade is pioneering in terms of adding a new module, if you will, uh, that makes a lot of sense and that doesn't exist yet in OpenStack. What I'm getting at is capacity planning. So let's talk a little bit about the Dynamic Network Resource Manager, or DNRM. All right, and to go back to the, the premises of this project, what we really need to do and understand is uh, what OpenStack, as well as any cloud management platform, is really, uh, uh, is really meant at, right? And one of the big prerequisites for any cloud management platform to work is that you have the capacity already within your infrastructure, right? That capacity has been pre-staged 
and then OpenStack can kick in and start to massage those resources across compute, network, and storage to really deliver this application to the business, okay? So now, what happens if you do not have that capacity, right? So let's take a look at uh, what Brokit is doing in terms of capacity planning and auto-scaling for networking. So, and we need just to go back to the classical usage, if you will, or the classical use case of uh, OpenStack, right? When a VM gets to be deployed, Nova kicks in, do, you know, its magic, and then, you know, uh, calls automatically Neutron. Neutron, we like to call the Brocade plugin, and will basically reconfigure uh, the networking device so now you can create the connectivity between end users and this application, okay? So now, we are taking here the case of uh, network function virtualization where those networking services are residing within the VM. Now, wait a minute. What happens if there is no VM available to be activated by the Brocade plugin? And that's exactly what we're adding in OpenStack. Uh, we have a prototype that's gonna be delivered, that's gonna be shown at our booth. Here is the way uh, this works. As soon as Nova calls in Neutron, then we capture that signal because we know that this signal is representative of capacity that's gonna be consumed in the network, right? So we propagate that uh, signal to the dynamic network resource manager for resource quota monitoring, right? So this DNRM piece is split into two modules. There is the network resource pool manager. It's an inventory system, if you will. And there is the network resource allocator, which is responsible for recreating capacity that is now missing into the infrastructure. The whole system is policy driven. You know, and initially those policies are gonna be fairly simple. This could be as simple as, let's say you've got a low water mark and a high water mark, and if you're outside of those boundaries for networking capacity, then something needs to happen. So say in that case, we, we have consumed the last virtual machine hosting the VRAV router, so what we want to do is reallocate one. Okay, so the network uh, resource allocator will actually call back Nova, which in turn is gonna spin a new VM hosting the VRAV router. This time around, the VM is in idle mode, right? And is ready to go whenever the need will arise, okay? So there is no reason why we shouldn't be able to expand this to the entire NFV portfolio of Brocade, including the virtual ADX, but what we really want to do is make sure that we design this solution in such a way that it's fully multi-vendor capable, right? What we have in mind is basically working with the community, making sure that we are designing and building a system that any vendor can leverage to its own advantage. Really the, you know, the, the, uh, the spirit in which we are working at the moment on this, uh, on this project. All right, so wanted to thank you. Looks like I just uh, exhausted my time. Uh, I'll be, you know, by the side, ready to answer to any question that you may have. Uh, thanks again for joining this uh, Brocade session on OpenStack. Thank you.